This is section 4.2, page 269, problem number 53. We're going to find the area underneath this curve, y equals 64 minus x cubed, from 1 to 4. We're going to use the limiting process, and we're going to use an RM. So we're going to divide this interval into equal subintervals, where the width of each rectangle is going to be going across here. We're going to use the b minus a over n formula, and the height of each of these rectangles, we're going to use the right endpoint to make that calculation. So we're going to draw rectangles that are going up, where the right endpoint is touching the curve, and we're going to find the height of the rectangle using this x-coordinate here. So the first rectangle <coughs> is going to look like this, and we are going to find the x-coordinate here uh, based on the width of each of these rectangles. So remember the b minus a over and formula, where b is the right endpoint, a is the left endpoint. So 4 minus 1 over n simplifies to 3 over n. That's the width of each subinterval, which means that this x-coordinate right here is going to be 1 plus 3 over n. That's important because that is the x-coordinate that will be plugged into the function for the x here to find the height of the rectangle. So the height will be the function with 1 plus 3 over n plugged in, which, if this is the function here, you're going to get 64 minus the 1 plus 3 over n quantity cubed. So that's the height of the rectangle, which is going to make the area the width times the height. And that's a 3 over n cubed. A uh, prettier version looks like this. So here's the width, here's the height, here's the area of this first rectangle. Then we're going to do the same thing for a second rectangle. We're going to draw a second rectangle up here. And the width is the same, the 3 over n. The height is going to be the height from here to here, this x-coordinate. Uh, remember, if the width is 3 over n and another 3 over n, then this x-coordinate will be 1 plus 2 of this 3 over n's. So if that is the x-coordinate, we're going to plug it into the function here for x. The height is going to be f of 1 plus 2 times 3 over n. Don't worry, that'll be prettier in the next slide, which is 64 minus, in parentheses, 1 plus 2 times 3 over n raised to the third. If that's the height of this blue rectangle and the width is 3 over n, then the area is just 3 over n times 64 minus 1 plus 2 times 3 over n raised to the third power. And there it is, all pretty. So there's the area of the second rectangle. Here's the height of the second rectangle. And we're going to do this one more time for a third rectangle in green now. Uh, I can't tell it's the screen, I think it is. This x-coordinate here is 1, 2, 3 of these widths. This width is 3 over n, 3 over n, 3 over n. So this x-coordinate here is going to be 1 plus 3 times 3 over n. And again, that's the x-coordinate that's going to go into our function here for x, giving us the height of this rectangle. So it's going to be 64 minus... 1 plus 3 times 3 over n, whole thing, to the third power. Uh, giving us the area, width times height, 3 over n times 64 minus 1 plus 3 times 3 over n raised to the third. And there it is, nice and neat. So we have the areas of three different rectangles, which if we look at the areas just the area pieces. Here's the area of the first rectangle, plus the area of the second rectangle, plus the area of the third rectangle, and you can see the pattern that everything is exactly the same except for the coefficient of the 3 over n, where the 3 over n happens to be the delta x, or the width of each of these rectangles here. So if we write that out horizontally <coughs> and look for the pattern, we should be able to come up with some sigma notation for this, where every one of them has a 3 over n, it has a 64 minus a 1 plus, and then some constant, I'm going to use k, k is the best constant, times 3 over n, 
whole thing raised to the third power, where k starts at 1 for this one here, and goes up to n by the time we get to the last rectangle over here, the last one will have n times 3 over n. And that looks like this formula here. We can do a lot of simplification to this. We can pull this 3 over n out in front. Um, we can make this 64 minus this quantity, 1 plus k times 3 over n cubed. That expanded looks like this. Uh, I'm not going to dwell on this, so if you can, you might want to pause this if you want to, you know, multiply that out and see that it's actually that. This whole thing here simplifies further, so this is what we had. If I distribute the negative through, I would have 64 minus 1, that's the 63, and then minus each of these terms, minus, minus, minus. And the 3 over n pulled all the way out in front here. <clears throat> um, then I can write this as a... Uh, sum of differences here. There's the sum of the 63, and then the 9k over n, the 27 over k, 27k squared over n squared, and the 27k cubed over n cubed. I'm going to take this, <clears throat> and uh, actually I think I'm going to distribute the 3 over n all the way through here, so I have four separate sums. Uh, and then the idea is we want to simplify these sums so that we can use our formulas the formula that we know for the sum of k goes from 1 up to n of k, or k squared, or k cubed. So I pull everything out here. I even pulled like the 63 all the way out here to the 189, so there's just a 1 left. Pull the 9 out and the n out, so I get 27 over n squared here. Only the k is left. Pull the 27 out, the n squared out. I'm left with the k squared here. And the 27 and n cubed go out, leaving the k cubed here. So all of this is now ready for us to do our substitution. We have our little formulas that if we have the sum of k going from 1 to n of 1, that's just 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1, n times, so that becomes n. And then this sum here, we have our little formula that that is equal to the n times n plus 1 over 2, which you don't have to have memorized. The k squared formula is here, and the k cubed formula is here. So that is a formula without summation uh, for the sum of the n rectangles. So for any number of rectangles, whether I'm adding 10 rectangles or 100 rectangles, I can plug in the number n in here and here and here and here and here and get the sum of all those rectangles areas added together. That sum, if I take the limit of as n goes to infinity, increase the number of rectangles without bound, the little area pieces up here will reduce down to zero, and this limit is the actual area underneath the curve. To evaluate this limit, we're looking at the limit as n goes to infinity of each of these pieces separately. Uh, the n over n <coughs> uh, is just going to go to 189, so this first piece is the 189. I have an n squared on top and n squared on the bottom, so the coefficients, negative 27 over 2, is right here. That's the minus 27 over 2. Don't, don't forget about this 2 out here. You have 2 times negative 81 times n times n times n. That would be a 2 times 81, 162 n, square, n cubed on top, and you have a 6 n cubed on the bottom. So the coefficient 2 times 81 over 6 with the negative sign accounted for. Be a little bit careful here. Don't forget that this bottom 2 is squared, so that's going to be a 4 on the bottom, negative 81 on the top, an n to the fourth, n to the fourth, limit as n goes to infinity. You take the coefficients, the negative 81 over 4. Finally, just simplify this uh, using com common denominators of 4. So 189 over 4, multiply 189 times 4, you get 756. 2 times 27 is 54. This reduces, the 2 goes into the 6. 3 times 3 goes into 81, 9. 9 times 4 is 108. And 81 is already over 4. 756 minus 54 minus 108 minus 81 is 513. 513 fourths is the exact area, exact area, underneath the curve.